Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in and listening. We have a special update. There is uh, a lot going on over in the Middle East you're not hearing anything about. And we've got Larry on his mountaintop. Larry, why don't we start with this uh, U.S. forces attacked and killed by ISIS? And uh, what's the latest do you have on that one? It says a number of U.S. soldiers were killed in an additional number wounded after ISIL targeted their military column in Hasaka City in Syria. What What is that about? Is that, a, I guess that you'd have to call that an ambush, right? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Now, we don't have confirmation on it. It's not in the news particularly, but uh, according to uh, Hal Turner, who just put out an alert on it, uh, evidently something's occurred. And that's the latest report. So it, it essentially goes unvetted, but he's generally been pretty accurate on what he's posting here about the Middle East, anyway. Right? Yeah. It, yeah. It's uh, and apparently, if the story's accurate, uh, this ambush occurred somewhere between Aleppo and uh, Mosul, uh, which is in that the corner of Syria and Iraq. And we do know we've got forces moving in that area. Uh, I guess we'll just have to watch that and see where it goes. It's getting very difficult to vet or even get the information anymore in in a number of venues. I thought we were uh, supporting ISIL. Why would they be attacking our own military columns? That's what I'm curious about. Because we're the ones who are supporting ISIS, ISIL, and, and all that over there. Is this just maybe a cover story or an accident? I wonder. Well, we 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 really just don't know. We do know that uh, you know the Russians have been bombing very close to that Al Tam uh, military base, U.S. military base in Syria, and so we don't know. We you know I mean maybe that's just a story, cover story, but uh, you know we just have to watch up in the upcoming week and see what little we can glean out of what really happened. Yeah, it's like everything you you, you hear, you're not sure whether any of it's true or not true. Uh, here, here's another one. Here is filming of a false chemical attack at hospital in Syria. Now, we've been hearing news that they were actually had already imported the film crews and that they were filming this. Well, evidently now... Are they actually, do you think, going to release this thing, even though probably everybody knows it's a total fake? (laughs) Well, I have to say uh, it's not that they haven't done it before, apparently. Uh, If you'll remember, we've had a number of these episodes of so-called Syrian uh, army gas attacks that appears really strange. Uh, Even the, uh, the images don't make good sense and the locations don't make sense and I think this one and I've watched the video and I'm sure you have too uh, mm-hmm. I sent you a link on it and you can yeah. you can tell they were being prompted on what to do and when this so-called alarm went off all these children fell down and started acting like they were having a gas attack you know it, it's it's all scripted Stuart yeah uh, but it may be enough to justify us going in, they got to have their war. I keep going back to that, that the Islamics need their war for their 12th Ayman to come up out of his uh, pit. And um, the deep state wants it because then out of the ruins of World War Three, we have uh, the Phoenix rising up. Uh, and it, it all seems to be tying together very rapidly uh, here's another one. Russians bomb Al Tamf, perimeter of U.S. base, American troops trapped. What is that one about? The Russian Air Force has begun bombing militants in Al Tamf, Syria. The bombings are taking place around the perimeter of a U.S. military facility. 
so far the base itself has not been targeted but anything moving outside the base is being eradicated that doesn't sound so good have you got any more on that particular situation well just now this is russia right yeah this is putin doing his work you know he said that they were going to erase uh, the isis and isil uh, al-qaeda terrorist groups that it mm-hmm. appears, uh, you know, or I'll say it looks like uh, Erdogan and Turkey and I guess the U.S. deep state have been for a number of years protecting. Well, so he's also threatened uh, the United States fairly recently, right? Uh, don't interfere with our operations in, in, in Lib and Syria, for that matter, or you you will suffer the consequences. Have there been any more verbal attacks out of either Moscow from Putin or is, uh, you know, equivalent of a secretary of defense? Have you heard any more on those? It just seems the deep state is still rattling its sword. Uh, Trump appears to be really quiet. Nothing much coming out of him. And uh, Netanyahu's been quiet because uh, Putin has warned, uh, you know, all of them, all forces, even Turkey, that uh, anyone that that, uh, attacks the Syrian army or anyone that moves with the Syrian army or attacks any Russians will be destroyed. And and he said uh, without exception. So, and at the same time, Stuart, we've got reports. You know, we can't vet it particularly, but there's reports that at least 60-plus uh, fighter jets from Russia have landed at Heminen Air Base, that's close to Tartarus in uh, Syria, mm-hmm. and they have landed Spetsnaz troops, uh, supposedly with uh, been given the go to move into the uh, Idlib area and begin assassinating these ISIS groups within that city. It seems like uh, Russia stopped bombing Idlib at the moment and began bombing closer to the U.S. forces, but uh, I think that's to give Turkey time to back out. You know, Turkey had a lot of armor move in there, and I think uh, Putin's trying to get him to back out of there, but of course we know prophecies down the road might indicate that he doesn't. Yeah. Well, from what I gather, Putin said, you either get out or we'll just take you out. So this is going to get very, very interesting, because Turkey, uh, you and I both know, and anybody really paying attention knows Turkey's been uh, playing both sides of the fence here, Uh, you know, both NATO and on the Soviet side, I guess one could say. But sooner or later, they have to get off the fence and they have to go one way or the other. Uh, So uh, here's the thing you were referring to from Turner's website anyway. U.S. and its coalition partners wondered what was up when 48 hours ago, 60 Russian fighter planes arrived in Syria, now apparently they know. <laughs> so Iran announced that if requested, it would attack the U.S. Army in the province of Hasika, along with the Syrian Army and Hezbollah. And Russia has also armed the Syrian territory with S-400 as well as S-300 air defense systems. Um, so here we are it's kind of a standoff then I read an article and I can't remember where I got it I think it was out of the TASS Russian uh, news agency that one of the reasons possibly for the pause other than getting Turkey out of there was to establish lines of um, how do I say escape routes so that the civilian population could move out which would indicate that when they've gotten most of the civilians out of there, it's going to be a scorched earth policy, and there won't be hardly anything left. And then I heard rumors also, and uh, maybe you can elaborate on it, that Putin is extremely angry over our involvement and everything else that's going on in Syria. Uh, Have you heard any more about that? Uh, well, he's been sending more in. There are reports now that there's at least 11 uh, Soviet, or not Soviet, but uh, Russian subs, you know, in the Mediterranean. And that's, of course, in the Mediterranean. We've also got 
American subs, and uh, I, I know at least one UK uh, submarine. Uh, and there is a, a massed uh, armada there of uh, Russian, Chinese. Uh, I guess you could say, I believe Turkey's got some ships with that armada uh, during the mm-hmm. uh, so called drills, you know, in the Mediterranean, which uh, Circle Fall indicates is really a circle of fire just in case somebody begins to attack Syria. Hmm. U.S. President Donald Trump threatened to make strong blows to Syria, but also threatens Russia and Iranian installations. Russia said Trump is not aware of the rules of war, that a war at the beginning is easy, but in the end no one knows what it can do. Then there's another headline, Putin warns Israel and Turkey... Uh, Putin is not satisfied with Turkey's role and has ordered the destruction of Turkish military aircraft by approaching uh, the Syrian-Turkish border. And the British have now also confirmed that Vladimir Putin's administration has sent eight submarines towards Syria as well. Any attempt, then Putin said... Any attempt to attack the Syrian army, which is what you just talked about, will immediately result in intervention of Russian forces. Wow, this appears like this thing is really starting to heat up. Yeah, um, it's, it's heating up pretty quick. As a matter of fact, sir, uh, Israel just did another uh, missile attack, you know, on a uh, what was reported to be an Iranian weapons uh, shipment there at I guess around Damascus Airport, and of course Putin is very disturbed about uh, these continued attacks against uh, Iranian and Syrian forces. So he's even threatened, um, you know, Israel. Okay, now here's an here's an odd one, and I don't understand this headline. Maybe you can enlighten me on it. China to take over Israel's largest port and could threaten U.S. naval operations. A top Israeli military and energy official has questioned Israel and China's growing economic ties, just as a Chinese company is set to begin operating the Hafa port as part of a major 25-year contract that was struck in 2015. Why in the world would Israel be doing anything with China? Of course, we do too, I suppose, but, you know, I mean, it just seems kind of odd that this is all part of a grand chess game. I mean, why well, would, would you turn to... over a port to a known well, enemy have... of the United States? I would yeah, just have ahead. to say, Stuart, yeah, I would just have to say uh, it, 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 it's got to be a globalist thing because why did we give the Panama Canal to the Chinese? That's who got it. That's who's running it. The same people running the Panama Canal presently are, is the same group that uh, supposedly will take over the Hoppe port. And uh, you as well as I know, this this is the globalist on the move. Yeah. Yeah, this thing, it just keeps running and running. It's kind of like the, uh, uh, what's the name of that bunny rabbit that keeps running and running and running? And, and, and this is like the new world order. No matter what you do, they, they're still there doing their thing. Here's another headline. Israeli reports claim new images confirm an Iranian surface-to-surface missile facility now is in Syria. So, you know, Iran was told to get out by Netanyahu. Uh, Netanyahu was given the finger, basically, by both Iran and Assad. And didn't we find out that Assad has given a nod of approval for three, at least three, Iranian bases in Syria? How can this thing keep going? Unless, of course, obviously, as you and I think, it's probably orchestrated to some degree. And uh, when the time comes, it'll just the switch will be thrown, and here we go. What do you think? I mean, it just seems odd to me. I just I, I think that a lot of this is going to continue and, until Isaiah 17. 
Yeah, I wonder how close we are to Isaiah 17 or Daniel 8. We're putting a squeeze on uh, before, uh, you know, it was sanctions and uh, embargoes, if you want to call them that, whatnot, that actually brought Japan to war. And it worked then, so maybe this is what Deep State is attempting to do to get Iran to strike out, and when they do, then we have our excuse to go in and eliminate Iran, and but that brings us face to face with Russia and Putin. So it makes you wonder who's going to preempt who when all of this gets really rolling. And here's another yep, thing for Netanyahu: Israel will never again fail to preempt attacks. BB's comments were delivered on the eve of the 45th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War. That was in 73 or something like that. So, um, isn't that kind of a, how do I say, showing your hand possibly that they have every intention of preempting and possibly even going into Iran to eliminate their nuclear capabilities? And would not Iran well, I, maybe look at it that way? Well, I wasn't aware that uh, they were keeping it a secret. We already know that there is a uh, typo plan between Trump, Salman, and Netanyahu to attack Iran. Yeah, it's just a question of who's going to do what and whether they want an excuse or not, or whether they're just simply going to preempt it and be done with it. Uh, You know, you've got all these prophecies, and here we are at the end of the 120th year, the 100th year, the 70th year, the 50th year, and it seems like that this thing has got to uh, uh, come to a head somehow or other, You can't keep smoldering this along, I wouldn't think, for too long. Look at the logistics that are required for Russia, for example, to be supporting all these troops, shipping all this military gear in. Same goes with Turkey. And if Russia orders Turkey out, do you think Erdogan will actually listen? Or do you think he'll just not pay any attention and continue? I mean, it's just shaking uh, up for a major war, let's put it that way. Yeah, I think Erdogan is, uh, I guess you could say, foolhardy, and uh, he likes to show his uh, power, if you will. Uh, He's liable Mm -hmm. to make a mistake and really confront Putin. Uh, That probably wouldn't be too wise any more than it would be wise for us to confront Putin, although we do have an awful lot of... Uh, secret military craft that could come out of the closet, I suppose, if they chose to use it. Uh, getting off onto that, onto earth changes, uh, volcanic eruptions are really taking off everywhere. Uh, volcanic activity is increasing worldwide. At least four main eruptions just in the last couple of days. Reunion Island, uh, Russia, Chile, and Japan. And uh, then there were reports about Iceland possibly coming alive. And what's the latest on Yellowstone? Have you heard any more about that? They're trying to keep it quiet, but stuff kind of leaks out now and then. Yeah, it's uh, the public domain is not really allowed to watch or view the Yellowstone information. And uh, that's kind of the same way we're also finding with the solar arrays recently. Uh, it's been, it appears to be that they're taking it out of public domain. Mm-hmm. What, have you heard any of the latest that you could report on at all on that? It just seems, you know, I've gotten a lot. I was reading a lot about that this afternoon. Insider report says this. Insider report says that. And every one of them kind of says a different thing. Although uh, there's got to be something going on, or you would not take down six or seven of these solar things as far as the public is concerned. Obviously, they're still operating, uh, but offline, so to speak, so the public can't access any of it. Have you heard any more on that at all that you can talk about? Yeah, I was uh, 
Well, I, I got a phone call today, and I can't see who from, but they're also reporting that uh, the uh, sunspot location is more active underground than above ground, that the activity is still going on ex- with the exception that uh, it's not in the public domain to observe anymore. Now, you know, I, I don't know how to vet that, but anyway, uh, other than that, uh this uh, woman that does a lot of investigations for George Newry. What did you say her name was again? Um, Linda Malton Howe. Yes, I was I was watching a, a video just before the show by Linda Malton Howe, and she was indicating, and the way she used the wording, she was trying to be very careful of, at her wording. She said uh, that uh, everything still is a mystery at Sunspot uh the sunspot location and mm-hmm. talked about all of that underground that nobody has access to and the guards that are stationed around that location and that uh, the way she put it, she says that everything there appears to still be ongoing and active with the exception that it's no longer available to the public. So I think that's what we're going to find, that all these places are not really shut down I think what they meant, they're shut down to the public, which indicates to me there's something out there that can be apparently viewed that they do not want the public to see. Yeah. Well, that also would kind of be on time with the timelines that we're operating on. I just don't see how we can go too many more years beyond where we are now. And speaking about timelines... Uh, Scotty Clark, and he's got an email. If you if you went on YouTube and just typed in Scotty Clark, you could see the latest uh, that he's put out. But it's very, very fascinating. He goes into the astronomical uh, timelines and that we have, how do I word this? We have celebrated the Feast of Trumpets one month early, and he proves it through astronomical software that we ha- it's actually October and we cross over the uh, fall or autumn equinox on 923, which is very interesting because on the uh, Jewish calendar, 923 begins the Feast of Tabernacles. But anyway, the actual date for the celebration of the biblical Feast of Trumpets is October 10th and 11th. October 10th should be the sighting of the new moon. And uh, he he actually literally does prove it and goes back into the Old Testament and uses exactly what the Lord had to say about it. And that for whatever reasons, uh, now there's another guy that put out something unrelated, but it verifies what Scotty had said, that I, I, and I don't know that much about how they operate over there and, their, and how they figure things out, but we are in a uh, pregnant year, and that moves everything one month ahead, which verifies what uh, Clark has said, that the real biblical Feast of Trumpets should be on October 10th and 11th, which moves then uh, um, the 10 days of awe, uh, atonement and tabernacles ahead as well by a full month. So this ought to get very, very interesting as we travel through these uh, the end of the timelines. And if that's true, we have not yet left 2018 insofar as the Lord is concerned with Israel. They're not they're not in five uh, seven seven uh, eight. Uh, or nine yet they have to wait another month they have to wait until october 10th and 11th so this may be why we're seeing such a massive build-up over there of militaries all over the world they're pouring everything in there and that reminds me of uh, i'm sure you remember remember when um, ed dames uh dr doom said that an object would pass by and all the navies of the world would look up and see this, and they'd all scatter and go home. Uh, you just mentioned before we got on air, what did Ed Dames say again? 
Well, I was uh, really inquisitive because Ed Dames has really been quiet. And yes. just simply, he hadn't been on radio. He hadn't been anywhere. We don't, you know, nobody really knew where he was. Uh, but uh, I was searching today, and I just found a uh, post by him. Uh, let's, let me read it real quick. This is really interesting. Sure. He just put it out. It says, Ed Dames launching a free remote viewing breaking news video channel to release urgent updates from his secret sanctuary location uh, it'll be it says global media is changing and now not showing needed data it says uh, coming quickly private video releases so Ed Dames is going to do his own and uh, you know apparently use some kind of video that uh, it, it can't be censored by YouTube and others and get the word out. Apparently, he has words that need to go out, and he cannot find the avenue. And, Stuart, you and I are facing the same dilemmas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have trouble all the time now. And, uh, uh, you know, they keep knocking more and more people off YouTube and whatnot. This is all um, – I, I felt this was coming because the New World Order cannot have truth out there, cannot have alternative news. They can only operate on total propaganda and lies. I mean, Satan is a, mur a murderer and a liar from the beginning. And Obama is, uh, you remember, he came right on TV, said he was good at killing people. Uh, in one of his speeches, he was talking about, I think, the cruise missiles. Keep your eyes on Obama, folks. I know a lot of people think this could never happen, but I got a feeling it's going to, and uh, quite soon. He's laying the groundwork, and I don't. What's the latest on the Trump coup, Larry? Before we close down. Well, what I've been seeing over the weekend, there are some real warnings coming out, indicating from supposedly insiders, really pay cautious time around September the twentieth, when this supposed uh, national yes. emergency release comes out, and it should appear on everybody's cell phones. Uh, we just have to wait and see, but there's also reports that saying watch out for a false flag or a movement of the coup because they have got to stop him, and he's at a point where a tipping point, if you will, so we've got to really watch. Yeah, because he's threatening, I guess, mass arrests and everything else, and, of course, if this is coming down the pike uh, with Mueller and all those other people, uh, they will have no choice but to create a big false flag of some type could be an economic collapse could be they have the technology for earthquakes they have the technology for volcanic eruptions uh they can steer hurricanes uh what's the latest on florence we have about a minute left other than well, mass it's still, flooding. it's still raining that's it uh the news what? media is covering it like uh it's a smoke screen that it appears to be and as a matter of fact, Stuart, uh, there were a couple of uh, insiders saying this is leaving our entire eastern seaboard and military bases really naked at the moment. Uh, we're, we're real vulnerable while, you know, everything's shut down. So we've got we to gotta keep a you know, keep a watch. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get hit, folks. We're going to be taken down. The Bible's very, very clear. It's not a question of if. It's only a question of when. And that depends on the Lord's time schedule. And with Putin rearming, China's getting their military ready. We, we've got a lot of enemies all round about. And with those uh, fully armed troops with uh, military uniforms coming across our border, I think that's a wide open warning from the Lord himself look out because the Jeremiah the prophet and its prophecies against America Babylon we are infiltrated it's the fifth column and they're going to rise up when the timing is right and we're going down and we're going to go down with the thud anyway thanks a lot Larry for coming on and uh, we'll try and get back on uh, as the need arises and uh, anyway good night take it easy and I hope you're prepared take care